after what happened to the pipeline? Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be in Gotland. Actually, uh, we had the Estonian refugees coming uh, or uh, were coming to Gotland, and apparently every tenth person uh, in Gotland is of Estonian origin. Um, we are uh, today meeting with the um, uh, Jeff leaders and, and talking about uh, uh, different issues regarding uh, defense. And of course, we are talking about uh, Russia's invasion to Ukraine and what we can do uh, in, in order to really support Ukraine, even if all those uh, horrendous attacks by Hamas are going on also in Israel. Uh, we uh, yesterday sent uh, a law of using the uh, frozen assets, uh, uh, Russian ro frozen assets in the benefit of Ukraine. We sent it to the parliament uh, and we can and have to think what we can uh, do to increase the uh, uh, pressure on uh, Russia to end this war. Of course, we also have to discuss how to protect our critical undersea water infrastructure. As you know, uh, we had um, a serious incident uh, where uh, our, one of our the data cables and the, and the pipeline was uh, severely damaged, gas pipeline. So the investigations regarding this pipeline uh, are going on and, uh, and we are not speculating uh, yet uh, what uh, could have caused this. But at the same time, we definitely have to discuss how we, what more can we do in order to protect our critical infrastructure. In NATO, we have under the Markom, uh, uh, we have just established uh, a center of excellence for the protection of critical infrastructure, and I, I think this is the time to put this in, in real use. So was it sabotage? What if it was sabotage? The pipeline, the damage, you're talking about damage now, right now, but was it, uh, according to you, sabotage? Uh, uh, we have to investigate. The investigation is uh, led by uh, Finnish authorities and Estonian authorities are, are with. Uh, regarding the data uh, cable, the investigation is led by Estonian authorities. Um, so far, we are not speculating because every, every word has, uh, has a very uh, uh, a strong, uh, strong meaning in this regard and, and let's not uh, jump ahead of uh, uh, things. But what we can do meantime is to really try to uh, you know keep on our, uh, our eyes on on the uh, sea and and uh, discuss what we can do to protect the critical infrastructure okay, do you want you. help from nato in this investigation uh, we have uh, not in in the investigation but uh, we have uh, yes uh, day before yesterday there was a, a defense ministerial meeting in, in NATO and this was also discussed. Um, Sakur can also move the different uh, abilities uh, uh, towards, um, uh, towards the Baltic Sea in order to show that, uh, uh, that uh, NATO is present and uh, don't even think about this. It acts as a deterrence as well. Um, but so far we can't say that it was sabotage, but we can't say it wasn't. Has the threat level against the countries around the Baltic Sea increased after this incident, do you say? Uh, no, I mean, uh, we are living beside the aggressive neighbor and uh, Russia is dangerous and has always been dangerous. Uh, that's uh, what we know. Um, so it hasn't changed uh, in this regard anything. We have been preparing for the hybrid threats because Russia is waging this shadow war when we see cyber attacks happening all the time and different hybrid attacks, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, with migrant crisis or creating chaos within the democracies. So we have to be vigilant and, and, uh, and we have been preparing for this uh, types of uh, um, situations uh, uh, already a long time. How well prepared are you since this happened? Uh, well, uh, as we don't know what really happened, uh, apparently we can do more in order to uh, protect our critical infrastructure. And therefore, uh, we have also discussed this on NATO's level. And, and fortunately, we established in Vilnius this uh, center of excellence for the protection of critical infrastructure. Where are the experts, but also uh, private companies? Uh, what more can we do in order to keep our eyes uh, on those very critical lines and cables that are under underwater? And also, what is your message to the Turkish President Erdogan in regards to the Swedish uh, application to NATO? Um, 
Our message is very clear. Uh, please uh, do the uh, things that you promised in order to accept uh, Sweden in NATO. I think we are all uh, waiting for this and uh, accepting Sweden in NATO will increase the security of our region but also the security of NATO as, as such. Are you running out of patience? <laughs> Well, in, in politics, you have to have patience, but, uh, but of course, we hope that this uh, will happen uh, very soon. Do you think Do you that NATO should uh, deploy the standing maritime force to the eastern part of the Baltic Sea as a response to what happened to the pipeline? Uh, it is up to Sakur uh, to decide where to move uh, which equipment. Uh, that is how, how NATO works, and, and I'm sure that they are looking at uh, the picture and, and uh, putting uh, different emphasis uh, where, it's, where it's necessary. Question from Swedish Radio again. What do you think about the shootings in Sweden today, two more dead people? This is uh, very um, stressing to, to read uh, because we have always considered Sweden as the most uh, uh, secure uh, and, and safe countries. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that uh, the Prime Minister, I talked to him yesterday about this, is also taking this very seriously and, and, uh, and working on this to be under control. But it's very worrying, of course. In what way? That the war in the Middle East now will attract attention from the defense war Ukraine is conducting, and as well as resources and support? Um, of course, uh, the horrendous attacks that Hamas has been conducting in Israel are taking the, our, our attention, everybody's attention, but we can't, uh, you know, move the attention away from Ukraine as well. Uh, Russia is, of course, uh, uh, waiting for this, that, uh, you know, other crises will come and, and we will get tired of, of supporting Ukraine, but we, we can't because uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, security for the whole region if uh, Russia walks away uh, with the victory here, then nobody is safe. Okay, thank you.